Hi there. Once again, you here with Barry, and uh, I want to touch base with you on a bit of information probably most of you aren't aware of, but anyway, over the weekend, uh, it came out on one of my uh, sources of information that I follow rather uh, consistently, and I want to discuss a little bit with you uh, about China had tested their digital currency for a third time over the weekend. And I want to discuss a little bit about the implications about why that might be of interest to you, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is bring in this chart right now. And China's capital city of Beijing uh, handed out because I'm doing this the following week. So over the weekend, they handed out approximately 1.5 million in a limited trial of the central bank's digital currency. Now, this is the, the third time that China's done this. I also want to bring it up to your attention that several other countries are experimenting with it too. Uh, several other nations, like the in, uh, entire nation of Europe. I brought to many people's attention uh, on a previous post about how Justin Trudeau, as of January 1st, had actually canceled the Canadian currency as a legal tender. That is the first step, as I explained. Head on back to that. It's only a couple of posts prior, so it'll be easy to find. But Justin Trudeau... Uh, canceled the Canadian paper currency and coin currency from being legal tender. It still holds its value and its tradability, but it is the first of a three-step uh, system in replacing it to their digital currency. So to make, without dwelling on this, uh, just understand in short, most nations, all nations are doing this to one degree or another. They've stepped up their game plan. They've stepped up their game plan uh, quite candidly. It's also showing and proving why we came out with what we thought about why the U.S. paper currency, and again, you can dig up in the archives uh, of several reasons why it will be the last one to convert, and so far that's holding uh, to the greater extent to be absolutely spot-on accurate. And uh, to a degree, it's because most of it's not even held in the country. But go back to prior posts of about, uh, I don't know, three weeks to a month ago, and you'll find it if you, if you go in the archives. If Leanne has a chance, uh, she'll link it. But moving forward, what the People's Bank of China is doing is they took three cities now. Uh, okay, Beijing is, is, you know, the capital, and it's the be all end all the business source of uh, China, but they also did it in uh, Shenzhen, if I pronounce it right, and Chusao. And uh, they're holding similar, they call them experiments, <laughs> interesting word. And uh, they've been doing that over the last few months as well. So they're giving a certain amount of individuals a limited amount of this digital currency, which uh, they would openly use as they would any other currency. Uh, just trade it. Not uh, They have a whole year to do it, so it doesn't have to be done right away. But what they want to do is track it and blah, blah, blah. But uh, there's more information about that. But here's the point I want you to take away from it. Also, before I, I switch this off, here's another point I want to bring up from the same market talk. There you go. PayPal Holdings. Okay, so PayPal, everyone's heard of PayPal, everyone knows what they do. PayPal Holdings is shutting down its domestic payments business in India from April 1st of this year. So again, this, this brings out alarming, it should be, but why I'm even bothering to mention this is it really serves a point to get into my next Part I want to talk about briefly, which is crypto. The mentors and whether we hold crypto or not, that's private. That's up to us. But remember, those of you that know us, we're not for or against. Okay, we just bring out tidbits of information that are not commonly found, and that's that's our claim uh, to value, and that's our claim to fame. 
But anyway, uh, exactly what PayPal is doing in India, one of the world's biggest populations, so shutting down their operations, culling their operations in that area of the world is no small decision. But it proves a point that without paper, without tangible cash, how so many changes are going to be implemented. Like, what is PayPal's value now? If everything is a digital transaction on a government digital currency, what value does PayPal have now? You see, it doesn't. Not that we can see anyway. I want you to bear this in mind. We were talking about this amongst ourselves, uh, the mentors and I, for quite some time now. And we've always said... There's a time to be getting into something and a time to be getting out of something, irregardless of what that something is. It could be art, collectible. It could be coin. It could be cryptocurrency. It could be antiques. It could be stocks, okay? There's a time to get into these things and a time to get out of them. Which is why I've often joked around and said, fall in love with good people. Don't fall in love with your investments. Our question becomes, what value do they hold when there's going to be something like a Google coin or a U.S. Mint coin or a One World coin for international transfers? What is their value at that point? When anything you decide to purchase with it, it's impossible to hide because there's no track of a debit or a credit. But yet anything you purchase with it is traceable from the proprietor side, from the vendor side. Okay? In other words, you buy groceries, you have a receipt. You go to a restaurant, there's a receipt. You buy a car, there's licensing, there's... Uh, inspection. There's all sorts of permits and receipts. You buy property, there's a title, there's a transfer, there's a receipt. So if you should unfortunately run into a problem and you're trying to keep things secret and some tax force or government force says, could you please show us the transfer record of that? We cannot find it off of your digital records. Well, you used to be able to say, yeah, but I paid cash for that. And you could have had a, a receipt, totally legitimate, or uh, as you've heard of, you could have even inscribed a receipt and made it look official, but it paid in cash. Okay, without that significant ability to say paid in cash, my question goes back to what value is it? I didn't say you couldn't make money on it. Treat it as a stock, not as a currency. As a matter of fact, kind of a bit of funny knowledge here. I'm, I'm going to sidetrack just for a second. Give me a second, excuse me. There isn't one of my subscribers or one of my circle of influence who didn't initially describe cryptocurrency as the new be-all end-all to get anything you want secretively without totally with it being totally untraceable and it's going to be the new money of the world that's what i remember every single one of them saying and regardless i'm not a fool i'm not saying you couldn't have made money on them just like you would have bought a stock but out of the hundreds and hundreds of subscribers, friends, acquaintances that I know that have been barking that same song for so long, there isn't one of them that maintain that. Now, it being a, a currency to take over and be a transferable currency in the world, nobody even talks about that. All they ever talk about is what it's worth is right now on the market, tradable. The funniest thing about that is what are they trading it to? Back to a currency that they're saying is going to be worthless in a very short time from now. So you see, the mentors, <laughs> I, I know, but the, uh, and again, I'm not for it, I'm not against it. Only a fool would say you couldn't have made profit on it. Just like 
2000 through 205. My God, a monkey with a set of Crayolas could have made money in real estate. But again, there's a time and a place. A lot of those people now, and nothing wrong with it, but have found themselves in different type of jobs and different type of, or different type of trades and professions. They're not in the dirt game anymore because they didn't see the trends. They did great for a few years and then it just fizzled. What we did was do pretty fair those few years, but in turn, we were making friends with all the asset managers because understanding trends and studying trends unbiasedly, we knew wages were not keeping up with the value. So therefore, stop there. This is not sustainable. When wages do not keep up with the cost of living, Whatever market you're in is not sustainable. Look what happened about the real estate in 204, 205. So you see, when those good folks, excuse me, I dropped my notes. When those good folks were doing excellent from 2000 to 204, it was okay. But then 205 kicked in and it was foreclosure city. And we had every bank from Fannie, Freddie, Back then, Washington Mutual, Bank of America, you want to name them all. We made friends with all their asset managers. So while everybody was really stumbling and seeing their market just obliterated, our market was just coming in because we saw the curve a year ahead of time. We saw the curve on the highway ahead of time. And we started to get initially over 50 uh, listings a week that were foreclosures because we were in foreclosure real estate because we saw that was the trend. 50 started to turn into over 200 listings a week. Now, for anybody in real estate who is a realtor or knows anything about real estate, being handed that amount of inventory is like a gift from the heavens if, 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 you, know, if you want a comparison. So this is why I'm saying the one thing that's constant is change. So when you see PayPal shutting down its operations in one of the most densely populated nations in the world, it, it gives you an idea. I want to consider on why I'm telling you to consider tangibles. And I'm not saying it in terms of come and, and, and do. You do what you think is right, okay? But here's the point. When currencies, as they go digital and as they convert, okay, remember, governments are broke. They cannot pay back their debt. Rather than default, they're going to trim the currency. How much? Nobody knows. But according to the money printing that is off the charts, it's going to be unlike anything we've ever seen before. I, I could easily see a 50% or higher reduction. Why? And again, it's not advice, but this is what we're doing personally. Why we're doing this personally is as they convert to digital currencies, the world that is, we wanted to park our assets and a hefty portion of them into tangibles such as physical metals, small denominations such as constitutional silver, junk silver if you want to call it, um, eagles, Nothing bigger than an ounce, though, okay? Maybe a few 5-ounce bars or 10-ounce bars, but that would be about the extent of it. We also wanted to park some of our assets into tangibles like real estate. Now, this is done primarily because, look, we can only live in one place, but however, if nobody really knows, and I don't care how skillful one might think they are in understanding the big picture, the future is the future. The only thing we know is the present, and that's with a lot of cloud in the past. So here, here we are, and we're going to have something five years from now that we don't know will be tender. It could be a one world coin. It could be an SDR, which is what the mentors feel it will be, which is a special drawing right. It's a basket of currencies levied at different percentages. I don't want to get into that now, but it seems more and more people uh, of the no are jumping on board. We've been suggesting that since 2015. It's going to be a form of an SDR on international trade, and there's going to be a separate domestic currency, okay? But that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is pointing you to understand 
Nobody knows five years from now what we're using. So let's say you're holding physical cash. You do need to hold a certain amount of physical cash. Hold anything, but just don't hold it in an institution, period. Getting back to what I'm trying to explain here. I want you to understand this. Five years from now, whatever it is we're using, sometime during that interim of five years, they went to the digital with a 50% correction, a 60% correction, a 32% correction against your paper currencies, okay? So they were trading $1 of paper currency to 60 cents worth of digital currency, okay? It's a 40% whack at the knees. If you had tangibles, you can then turn around and sell that, but you would be selling it into what ever the future tradable currency is without taking the haircut of holding the notes that were replaced when you go to replace them into the digital when they decide they decide remember that what will the exchange rate be now if you think it's going to be one to one or a hundred percent value that's a choice good luck because I've always said even doing nothing about any of this is also a choice. The choice is to do nothing. And those that choose to do that, they can not believe in reality all they want. They're going to suffer the consequences because you can't protect yourselves from what happens from ignoring reality, all the hardship. Okay, So I would rather park this into a physical commodity and five years later when things settle or three years time is irrelevant because you've moved it on the sidelines it's not active whatever i decide when to sell it whatever will be the currency i'm going direct from tangible back to new currency so i am not taking the hit of the exchange that's the real and plus it's out of an institution that's the second reason why i would recommend or we recommend this to consider it, not recommend doing it, at least consider it, okay? A very notable uh, person out on the uh, financial networks, and uh, I mean, years ago, I used to listen to him, long time ago, but his name, I believe it was Doug Casey who did this, and he coined a phrase which I've remembered over the years because I thought it was so sensible. Uh, he's coined a few good ones, but actually, uh, he says now, I'm not as much concerned of a return on my investment as I am about a return of my investment, okay? And there are times that you do want to be a little bit on the conservative side. What's happening out there, guys, is absolute senselessness. It doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. And in closing this, I want you guys to see what's taking place, okay? The digital currencies are moving exceptionally fast. Uh, people that are considering relocating and are not interested in any type of immune or vaccines better get moving fast wherever you are because that's where you're going to be staying for a while. Not saying forever, but I am for a while. Once the vaccine is injected, there's no turning back. Okay, um, you do your own research on that, those of you that are interested. But in, I hope this video clearly points out of there's times to get in of investments, out of investments, return on investment, return of investment in troubled times. And it appears that's where we're headed, okay? So I hope this made sense and you're not spending, you're reallocating. Remember that. All you're trying to do is protect yourself from the hit on the exchange from the paper in the future to the digital. Okay? Anyway, I want to keep you up and informed. I don't think many people are going to get this information. And we will talk to you soon. It's Ovarian DR.